I'm Sylvan. This is my Greek friend, Jake. Yo. And we built a uh, 3D model loader. Sounds pretty impressive, but it's actually pretty straightforward and achievable by normal guys. We got like a template from our teacher that was, it, it was in OpenGL and C++, and it was like how to render a cube. I think they just ripped it straight out of the OpenGL docs and maybe changed a couple things. Jake was like, we can make a model loader with that. Well, I'll say from that template that they gave us, we saw the potential that we could input, of course, our own coordinates in 3D space to render whatever shape we want, but we didn't really have the patience to go through modeling something by hand through just math, because that's actually horrible. Yeah. What I wanted to do for a little while was make a 3D model of a watch, like a watch movement, actually. Oh, yeah. And the gears and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Making one gear just would have been so overwhelming. So we figured that we would make a, a model loader. And so we decided to use the Wavefront OBJ file format because it's just the simplest to parse. It's not really hashed at all. It's basically just like a line by line CSV file pretty yeah. much. It's, it's just raw text that says the vertices, indices that create the triangles using those vertices. It also contains the normals for those uh, triangles uh, and with that we later uh, implemented some light with our shader some lighting simple lighting what do we load in first is it the teapot or we loaded in a cow first oh yeah i remember also yeah. like the first thing we loaded in was like so fucked up it was just like a explosion of random triangles with random colors yeah at first was awesome <laughs> <laughs> at first a huge problem that we were having was so we're really stupid and we had some indexing math wrong i mean if you can imagine you're trying to make a triangle here but you also have the coordinates for a triangle over here and you're supposed to specify that they're different triangles. But when you have even off by one, then a triangle is made out of like this, this vert vertex, this vertex, and then a vertex over here. So the triangles, like it gets so scrambled just with the smallest change to your indexing math. Um, it's kind of cool. But, you can kind of see like some of what the shape is supposed to be. Yeah, it's true. We, we were able to see kind of the vague semblance of a cow yeah get it to look like what you're seeing on the screen right now <laughs> yeah what we did do is like pull some crazy 12 hour days of like in one room just like grinding out yeah so after we got the model loading working we we messed around and got shadows working because those are also kind of like encoded in the models um and we got some other we got like a flight controller type of thing so you can view the scene yeah Eventually, we attached it to like a, a wasp model that you like animated somehow in Blender. Yeah, the way that I animated it was not through skeletal animation because that would have been pretty nuts. Um, I just did vertex animation, which is basically you have a, a separate fully rendered model for each frame of the animation. So this, this wasp that we had, I think it had like 21 different full-fledged models like chunked in and then rendered at each frame a separate kind of astounding um, that it even runs at all with that <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so not memory efficient it's really it's pretty amazing how well it performs also the sick thing is we forgot to submit this to the final project the, the deadline closed and we were doing some random shit and forgot about it but we still we still maxed out the points in the class so yeah it was fine you yeah. didn't even have to do this yeah it's true um in that class advanced programming we have this like really awesome professor that we're we're, we're pretty close with She's we're actually, bro. yeah yeah we're, we're doing an independent study with her right now on computer graphics spoiler <laughs> alert yeah so she was kind of lenient because she knew how much work we were doing on it we were doing like 10 hours a day yeah on this um eventually we really wanted to progress things towards a game engine where we wanted controls and we wanted objectives and hitboxes. Um, oh, we did get hitboxes. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. What we were mostly caught up on was optimizations. We were really trying to optimize the data structures that were holding all of the vertex information, trying to optimize the data structures holding color information, all, all that stuff. We were really, and we kind of run out of time, ran out of time in the semester to make things yeah, kind of into a out. game. Um, but we were awfully close. I mean, we had 
should have won. I feel very the CS similar. fair for being C plus plus Chads. We wrote us all ourselves in GLSL, no Chad GPT, pretty much, and like. Pretty much. <laughs> but fair. yeah, this this fucked like chess.com ripoff meets google drive google google maps it was just like three api calls with like a nine person team and yeah model letter isn't like that original but at least we built it from scratch from the ground up they clearly just like chat gpt stapled together like the most it's just so bad i don't know how that won the cs fair for that category uh yeah well <laughs> Yeah, so there's no moral, really, I guess. <laughs> we did learn a ton, and honestly, our objective in this project wasn't to win the CS Fair. It wasn't even for a grade, because we were... What? Because <laughs> we were um, we were doing really well in the advanced programming class. We both finished with A-pluses, and... That's pretty normal for me. Yeah, and me, <laughs> me too. Um, I think what really drove us was the learning uh, that... We, you know, we were learning a ton in this project. Every single day we would be, even if we made no progress, no visual progress, you know, if we made a small optimization or if we were just reading a ton or watching some videos, we were just learning a lot in yeah, just a couple true. weeks. We were, we were spending a lot of time learning and I find that to be really valuable. Yeah, I know a lot more GLSL than Spanish now. Yeah, I'd say now after this project, I'm most confident in C++ where before I say, I say I was kind of struggling to understand the reason behind certain rules of syntax. I was like, it's like, damn, what's the deal with these pointers? What's the deal with this and that? But now I feel like I could really just bust out a quick project, you know? Yeah, same. Yeah, that shouldn't make it into the video. <laughs> That'll make it in. That's making it in.